in that. So digital health interventions are digital and mobile technologies for supporting health system needs in general. And in particular, we are talking about digital functionality for clients, for healthcare providers, for health system managers, or for data services. So um, really everything or everybody who is involved in this system. And now what are prototypes? So prototypes can be used or should be used to provide a clear idea of an end product in a scaled down and rather minimum version. And uh, the purpose is to represent usability, functionality or design issues of a product, of an idea to uh, stimulate communication or to detect errors all along the way of developing a fully functional um, pr product at the end. So um, prototypes can be used for discussion with different stakeholder groups, or it can be used to provide a proof of concept and uh, to really um, find out more about what stakeholders or users want to have and how to implement this. And there can be more or less advanced prototypes. So this can go from paper prototypes to more advanced sketches to real click prototypes or even functional prototypes at the end. So it always depends at the goal which you want to reach at the end. So, and why do we as the LBI develop prototypes? So we are a research institute. Why do we do, we, uh, do development in this direction? So um, I would say the aim is to gain knowledge and new insights from a scientific point of view. So when we have prototypes, we try to find out things which we cannot find out otherwise probably. So for example, we want to find out how digital uh, apps, for example, can empower patients to do heart health or physical activity, for example, or how they can be motivated to, um, to live a healthier life or also in the long term to sustainably change their behavior towards a uh, more healthier lifestyle. So these prototypes can help us to gain valuable inserts, uh, insights in research. And um, I think now you will be curious what we developed so far. So we have a range of prototypes from really rough ones, I would say, to more advanced ones. Uh, and um, they all have different foci. Some are focusing more on the heart healthy aspect of, um, of our research. Some are more focusing on gamification aspects or social aspects. So very different foci we want to explore within the LBI. So we have also different user groups uh, with which we try out or develop the prototypes. We evaluate the prototypes. And um, at the end, we also aim to put at least one into a clinical study to really uh, measure the effectiveness of such a digital health app. And I will now directly come to uh, examples of prototypes we develop. And I will now um, directly jump into a short presentation of Active Plan. Das ist hard. Er hat ein paar Kilo zu viel, weil er sich in seinem Job nicht viel bewegen muss. Und auch sonst hat er es gern gemütlich. Er spielt zum Beispiel mit Worms immer mit seinen Freunden Karten. Vor zwei Monaten ist Harald 57 geworden. Kurz darauf hat sich sein Leben schlagartig verändert. Er hatte einen Herzinfarkt. Damit hat er nicht gerechnet. Die anderthalb Wochen im Krankenhaus war nicht schön für ihn. Er fühlte sich schwach, hilflos und verzweifelt. Wie geht es weiter? Wird sein Herz jetzt für immer schwach bleiben? Auf Anraten des Arztes beginnt Harald eine ambulante Herz-Kreislauf-Rehabilitation. Beim ersten Termin hat Harald ein Gespräch mit Dr. Sabine Grober. Wissen Sie, dass regelmäßige und gezielte Bewegung die Wahrscheinlichkeit reduzieren kann, erneut einen Herzinfarkt zu erleiden? 
schnell lässt sich Harald von einer Bewegungstherapie überzeugen. Weil er aber auch weiß, wie schwer es ist, Bewegung in seinen Alltag einzubauen, ist er froh, als Frau Dr. Gruber ihm die aktivplan app vorschlägt. Gemeinsam besprechen sie seine körperliche Verfassung, Vorlieben und Gewohnheiten und erstellen mit Hilfe der aktivplan app einen auf Harald zugeschnittenen Trainingsplan. Die aktivplan app unterstützt Harald dabei nicht nur in der Planung und Dokumentation seiner Therapie, sondern wird ihm auch helfen, alles durchzuziehen. Hier sehen wir Harald beim Schwimmen. Heute ist er richtig motiviert. Er zieht schon fast eine Stunde seine Rücken. Zufrieden sieht Harald später in der App, dass er in dieser Woche bereits die Hälfte der empfohlenen Aktivitätsminuten absolviert hat. Er schaut sich an, was er die nächsten Tage sonst noch tun soll und genießt es, dass er aktiv an seiner Gesundheit arbeiten kann. Jetzt fühlt er sich nicht mehr hilflos. Schnell liest er noch den Tipp des Tages. Trinke ausreichend Flüssigkeit, steht da. Und das wird Harald jetzt auch tun, beim Kartenspielen mit seinen Freunden. So um, this was a short teaser video um, showing the basic functionalities of our Active Plan app, which is an app to plan and document regular heart healthy exercise together with the health professional of your choice. So this app is uh, about encouraging patients with cardiovascular disease, so with heart problems, to make physical activity part of their life. So this is really important in order to, so when heart patients are on re rehabilitation, they should really after the first phases of rehabil rehabilitation stick to a heart healthy behavior. And with this app, we try to aim for that. So we want to empower patients to perform exercises on their own without any trainers, but really to integrate them into their daily life. And also we want to support uh, shared decision-making of the health professional and the patient to really motivate the patient to do that. So our research in this, our research with Active Plan is about long-term engagement with digital health apps. It deals with habitualization so how can you make something like regular heart healthy physical activity a habit in your daily life it's about supporting shared decision making user empowerment and also about how individually adapted messages can kind of shape or tailor users behavior so this was active plan another prototype is active waiting With this app, uh, we aim to make users use waiting times for short exercises, so-called exercise snacks, as every move counts. So on the right-hand side, you see a video. Ah, sorry. You see a video. I will play it. Yeah. Um, and this is the app. You can select which type of exercise you want to perform. On, on that day in that session, you can also choose if you want to perform obtrusive or also unobtrusive exercises. So this one, the jumping checks would be a rather obtrusive one, but there are also exercises which are not so visible for others like relaxation exercises or breathing exercises to calm down a bit. So um, with this app, we want to make use of waiting times. We want to make people integrate physical activity into their everyday lives and thus contribute to a healthy lifestyle. And uh, research-wise, it's about acceptance of such short exercise snacks or short exercise units. It's about barriers of performing regular activity, um, especially in public. And it's also about re um, researching on user experience. For example, we also uh, investigated which um, aesthetics aspects or which um, representation of exercises is uh, preferred by users. So next one, uh, shared achievements. So here it's about forming a team, collecting steps and climbing a mountain, in our case, the Untersberg together. So um, here we want to increase physical activity by 
common group goals. So the social aspects are in the foreground. It's also about researching on shared attention and its influences on physical activity as, uh, yeah. So I will go on with active audio adventure, another prototype uh, which, um, in which you are part of an outdoor adventure uh, in which you listen to a story and collect hints by performing exercises to master the adventure. So, uh, sorry, I will also, um, you will now hear the intro of this app. According to a legend, a treasure of incredible value is hidden on Munchsburg. It is about an elixir of life, which prevents diseases, gives happiness, energy, strength, and a long life. On your search for the elixir of life, various tasks await you. If you master the task, you will receive clues about the legendary elixir. To start the adventure, leave the building, turn right, and go up the stairs. Every 30 meters, you will hear a special sound indicating that you are on the correct direction. So um, active audio adventure um, deals with or tries to get up people from the couch and out into the fresh air. So we try to motivate people to explore their environment, to perform exercises in a playful way. So on the right uh, picture, you see an example of an exercise which should be performed within the story. So it's the exercises integrated into the exercises which should be performed are integrated into the story. And so it's about audio games. It's about narrative gamification and uh, immersion. So these are our research focus here. So now I gave you um, a bit of an overview of our prototypes, but next to these prototypes, we have another, um, I would say bigger project, which is called MORE. So MORE is about setting up and managing studies and collecting sensor-based and survey data in order to investigate digital health interventions. I would consider more as a very ambitious development with many stakeholders. So um, here on the right hand side on the top, you see um, the Redlink team. This is the developer team uh, with which the LBI uh, develops the more app. And you also see um, the Land Salzburg um, is part or is the funder of this project and below Many of our project, pa project partners from the LBI are also part in the development. So we tried here to really integrate stakeholders and potential future users in the development. So, and now I'm pleased to share a short video with you, which was created by, by Redlink, by the developers, and which should give you some first insight on a first uh, now existing prototype of this app. and I'm the CEO of Redlink. In this video, I show you the more platform that we developed together with the Boltzmann Institute for Digital Health and Prevention. More is an audio and open source platform for setting up, conducting, and evaluating studies in the area of sustainable digital health research. It consists of two main user-facing components. First, a web application that allows healthcare experts to define and manage studies and evaluation processes. Second, a smartphone app for study participants that guides patients through the procedures and enables recording data from mobile sensors and variables. Our example study deals with physical inactivity as a major risk factor for the development of cardiovascular diseases. We focus on the question whether so-called just-in-time adaptive interventions have an effect on physical activity behavior. <coughs> The interventions we aim for are trigger and exercise snacks to stimulate activity, trigger and relaxation moments in case of high stress level, and more. As an outcome, 
we want to analyze data that is produced by participants during the study. Passive one, like heart rate and GPS data, as well as active one, like the answers of questionnaires. The MOA app is currently in beta state. It includes the configuration of observations and interventions, the execution of the study by an Android mobile app, and the visualization of the collected data. But now, let's turn into a researcher and configure our study. After logging to the study manager, I got a dashboard of all studies I own, or I have been invited to this collaborator. I already started configuring a study called Preventing Cardiovascular Diseases Through Physical Activity. In the detailed view, I get an overview of general information and configured study groups. The tabs show the main parts of my study configuration, like participants, observations, and interventions. Within the observations, I can configure all measurements I want to get from the participant's smartphone or attach variables as well as questionnaires. The interventions consist of triggers and actions. In this case, I want to recognize the threshold of data values from the observations and send a push notification to the user with the message on the app like, do we use sports? Both interventions and observations can be executed to all users or to specific user groups only. When the configuration is done, I start the study and I provide registration tokens to my participants. As a participant, I just have to install the app and get the registration code from the institution which conducts the study. After reading and accepting the terms, I can see the schedule of all the tasks that I have to do during the study. I can switch to the details view and immediately start participating in the study by answering the introductory question. Then I am ready to start recording my daily activity. After finishing the task, I can stop the recording. The dashboard shows live data from the participants. The data includes all measurements and interventions. Send the data, participants' answers, and notifications. In this example, we see the values from the accelerometer. At any time, I can filter in by study groups or by participant. When the study is completed, the entire study data can be exported, so I can use it in special data science tools. The more platform will be publicly released in April 2023. At this time, the platform will be available for use in various health and evaluation studies. In the next month, we will further develop the MORE platform as an open source project and integrate feedback from health-related organizations from Salzburg. In addition, we will implement the mobile app for IS and publish the apps in the app stores. Stay tuned and follow the news on the LBI website. Thank you and good luck. So this was an example of a more advanced prototype, uh, as I said, which we developed together with Redlink. And now I want to go into the last part of my presentation um, about the reflection and takeaways of what we did so far. So first, and I think um, suitable for this session, is I would claim to involve real users. And I really want to appreciate the value of having real users within the prototyping and development process of an app. So user input is always useful. Um, and um, it's really important to ask users about their concerns and to take them seriously. So as uh, Mathieu already said, when you integrate in integrate them, that's um, up to your decision. So sometimes it can be better to involve them earlier in, in terms of quality assurance and acceptance, both of developers, researchers and users, I would say. But you ha also have to be aware of the fact that there will be trade-offs, that there are trade-offs that have to 
have to be made in practice. So um, user involvement can always be on different levels and have to be thought over carefully. And you also should keep the user burden low. So really think about when and how it's necessary to, to involve users. So perhaps already in the idea generation phase, perhaps um, uh, later on in the final evaluation phase. So really depends on that. So also important is to understand and communi communicate. So what I mean with that is to get a kind of contextual understanding as a developer, as a researcher, to have empathy with users and to um, be clear of the fact that users are not users, so they're all different and you really have to try to, um, to know what they want to have and not what you want to have. And it's uh, also about group work. So never forget that there are a lot of people standing behind one prototype, which could be that they're from different worlds and that they speak different languages. But here, there's really the challenge to get this together in a good manner, which also means that communication takes time and patience. So do not forget this. And we found, for example, personas, as you see on the right hand side with Markus Meyer and Franz Gruber, we, we found them really useful for improving the communication between health experts, developers uh, and users. And uh, it's also important, I would say, to question personal biases. So really try to throw away pre-assumptions. For example, elderly users are not always those who are not um, who don't who do not use new technologies. Also, uh, tailor your prototyping strategy to your goals. This means that different that there are different ways of how ideas evolve and prototypes come into life. So ideas can evolve from specific needs, or there can be ideas evolving from other projects' input and so on. So, but it really depends on your goal, on how, how, how advanced the prototype you want to develop is. So this can be from sketches to click prototypes. And here the challenge is to really find the right level of detail. So for example, working prototypes can be useful, useful for detecting er errors in interactions, which are easily recognized or when complexity but when complexity increases, changes are difficult. And there's also, um, there could also be person, a kind of personal attachment from the developer, which is also not so good so that you don't change ideas later on. And um, with regards to paper prototypes, so the advantage is that they're less effort, that you can easily throw them away and generate new ones and that they are good for triggering initial communication. So between these um, working prototypes and paper prototypes, you kind of have to find a balance and find out what your goals are and what you need for that. I also want to um, provide you the takeaway that you shouldn't aim for perfection. It will not be possible, probably not at the first time and not at the 10th time. So uh, also do not try to reinvent the wheel, but use existing features and frameworks. And uh, with that avoid uh, feature creeps. So focus on the core functionality and try to keep the focus. And also what I think is very important um, to be open-minded and never to forget to ask why. So I would say creativity evolves best in an open-minded environment with high appreciation of each other. And um, it's also important that you really try to explore and find out things instead of thinking in predefined solutions and al already having the solution for something. And uh, positive error culture is also important as errors are something which can really help you to learn new things and to explore new things and ways of doing something. And uh, lastly, I would advise you to be prepared for the unexpected. So there can be potential pitfalls and errors. You should really try to 
um, keep them in mind, but also keep in mind that you never can foresee everything and uh, also uh, deal with others' expectations and make it clear that development takes a lot of time. So um, I know I'm over time, but um, yeah, I really want to advise you to keep your focus, uh, even if that means that you cannot be everybody's darling. And uh, thanks for your attention, and I'm happy if you have any questions to answer them. Thanks uh, so much for the wonderful presentation, Daniela. It was nice to look at all those prototypes you showed at various stages of development, especially the more platform. Uh, <clears throat> and we have one question from our audience, actually two questions from one uh, audience.